Hello and welcome. It's the chat. My name is Manny. Uh, my guest on the program has a very charming personality, which you'll get to find out in the course of this program. At some stage in her life, she wanted to be like me, and uh, she did not get on with it. Eventually, she has started doing something else. Now she's at the head of an agency in Nigeria responsible for tracking traffickers and, you know, victims of trafficking in persons. Julie Oka Donley is a legal practitioner, chartered administrator, founder, Julie Donley Kidney Foundation, and currently serves as the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, in Nigeria. An indigenous of Biosa State, she was born in Lagos on the 30th of December 1966. She attended Bagada Girls Secondary School in Lagos and later proceeded to Amadu Bello University, Zaria, where she obtained a diploma and degree in law. In addition to being called to bar in 1992, she earned herself the Dean's Award of the Moot Court Competition. After her education, she worked in several private and public sectors in Nigeria. From 1996 to 2002, she worked as an associate at Anthony Igbene & Co. S.O. Ajayi and in 2005 was appointed as a legal advisor and company secretary to the Nigerian Capital Market Institute. However, after a few months, she resigned and moved to UBA Trustees PLC in 2006, where she headed the Northern Region. In 2007, Julie was appointed as the executive assistant to the former Bioso State Governor, Chief Timmy Press Silva. Serving the governor for five years, she advanced to Legal Resources Alliance in November 2012 as the deputy head of chambers. Barely a year after, she established her legal firm, Julie Oka & Co., with her as principal partner. In 2017, Julie was appointed the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, where she serves till date. Julie is a member of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, a fellow Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators International, FCIS, and associate Chartered Arbitrators of Nigeria, amongst others. As a mother of two, she is a fitness enthusiast who spends her extra time creating health awareness and supporting people with kidney-related diseases. It wasn't like I went back on my thoughts per se. I think um, being a broadcaster to me was my second choice. You know, my first choice was to be a lawyer. Uh, second choice was to be a broadcaster. And then I went with the first choice. I I'm toying with the idea of being a broadcaster later on. I mean, and give my services for free. I never saw myself here. Never. I mean, it it's, 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 so, it's such a... Um, uh, a spiritual coincidence, if you like. Um, I have an NGO um, called the Julie Donnelly Kidney Foundation. My NGO assists indigent patients, you know, who are suffering from kidney diseases or failure um, to pay for their dialysis once in a while. We also offer um, free screening and um, carry out like awareness. Uh, programs on how to take good care of your kidneys so you don't get your kidneys damaged because for me I always say prevention is better than cure at all times and then um, funny enough NAPTIP was the last place I came with my my team to carry out a free uh, screening um, not really I've been a lawyer since 1991 and uh, my NGO started like in 2000 and something. I'm not very good with dates now. Um, my mom died of kidney failure. Um, she had a kidney transplant. Unfortunately, uh, technology was not as advanced at the time. 
it was a 50-50 thing and her body rejected the kidney, the transplant. And then she had one or two complications here and there. She was on dialysis and she finally died. And um, I know for a fact that if we were not able to afford it, she would have long died. You know, it's a very expensive treatment that I know. And then I said to myself, most of the people that have this kidney failure can't even afford a dialysis session, not to talk of a transplant. And so I toyed with the idea of, you know, setting up this um, foundation to assist um, indigent patients whenever I can, you know, to pay for their dialysis because it helps and it goes a long way. And of course, to prevent the disease from happening. I've been working since 1990, yeah, you know, and so I, 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 I started thinking of helping them not just to pay for dialysis, but to prevent the disease, which is the most important thing. Because if you prevent the disease from occurring, you won't be talking of paying for dialysis. And that's what I was doing, you know, and that's what I still do. I felt God was talking to me. I felt God was telling me something because truly, the first day I stepped my feet into Naptip, I said to myself, wow, do people really work here? That was my observation, you know, because everywhere was so quiet. And I said to myself, do people really work here? So I think God was speaking to me and telling me, you ask the question, you go back and answer that question. Wow. Yes, that's just the way I saw it. Well, the truth is that this job is a work in progress. It's not a one-off job. And so it's something that, you know, you just have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you're able to bring um, human trafficking to the barest minimum. Prevention is better than cure. NAPTIP is going to be in the faces of everyone. Small children, big children, men and women. They are going to know who we are, what we do. They are going to know the indicators of trafficking. The truth is that um, a woman, from my experience, a woman will do better in NAPTIP because, you know, we deal with children, we deal with women who are traumatized, who have been sexually abused. We deal mainly with women and children. I mean, come on. I mean, that's a mother's job. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's something that a woman would, will be more sensitive to, a woman will really understand where they are coming from, a woman will really understand what to do and how to achieve it. Well, what I think or what I find to be more challenging so far is information sharing. That's it, information sharing. A lot of people know what's going on, but they don't share information. Then sometimes we have problems with some law enforcement agencies who don't share information. I give you a typical example. Maybe some traffickers have been caught, you know, maybe in the act of trafficking. Some victims are rescued. Instead of just simply referring them to NACTIP, because we have the facilities to take the children into our shelters, we are armed with the power to arrest and prosecute. They want to do it themselves, but they know they can't do it. Sometimes you switch on the TV and you hear, ABC has arrested some traffickers and rescued some children, and we're waiting for ABC to refer them to NAPTIP, and that's the end of it. I think the support services from some law enforcement agencies make my job very challenging because NAPTIP cannot do this alone. If we all work together as we should, then would our problems would be really 80% solved. We need to work with each other. We need to share information. It's very, very important. It's not so much about funding because funding is nothing that is just, you know, a NAPTIP thing. It's, it's a general thing. When you are prudent with what you have, you can manage to some considerably, uh, considerable degree. We are very prudent here in terms of managing the funding we have here in NAPTIP. And we also have international partners, organizations that assist to fund projects, which to me is very important. Trafficking is a global problem. 
that requires a global solution. So it's not restricted to West Africa or Europe or the Middle East. It's all over the world. Um, I went to Libya because the federal government set up this fact-finding committee some time ago to go and see what was going on in Libya. We were told that most of um, our citizens were in detention camps and um, the federal government wanted us to go bring them back because most of them wanted to come back. And that was what we did. Um, there was a story on CNN about how Nigerians were being sold as slaves. And then um, that bothered Mr. President, and he really wanted us to do something very drastic, which we did. Some of them felt they had gone too far to come back. They had spent everything they had. They had been raped, they had been abused, and they thought they had nothing to lose. And they, they, they were going to stay back to see if they can still cross. Because Libya, mind you, Libya is not their final destination. Their final destination Europe. is Europe. So some of them thought, no, I don't want to go back. I still want to try. You can't force anyone to come back. You, 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 you appeal to them, you persuade them, you counsel them. They need a lot of counseling, though. You know? And then you find out that those that were really counseled were able to you know, see reason. Sometimes you know, people differ. You can't, um, you, it may take me one hour to counsel you. Well, it may take someone else six months to one year. So, you know, people differ. So it's, it's not a short-term thing for some people. They are from the south-south part of Nigeria, especially those in Libya who want to cross to Europe. Those of them come from the south-south, Delta, Edo, Rivers, Bayelsa. Those that are being trafficked to the Middle East. They come from the southwest, they come from the northeast, north central, and all of that. You know, so every country has its own, you know, group of indigents, you know, spread across, you know, the various countries from Nigeria. So Nigeria has become a very is endemic in all the, all states. All states in Nigeria are end, endemic. Um, it's no longer a one or two state thing, and that's why Abinishio had always said, "Look, we need to carry out this sensitization." awareness campaign aggressively in all the states because when you concentrate on one state what it does is that the traffickers move to the next and the next and the next so we must have this you know massive awareness campaign you know aggressive campaign simultaneously in all the states and that is why we went ahead to start setting up human trafficking task forces in some states now edo was the first to set up they have theirs now, when you have a task force in your state, the governor owns it. The governor is in charge. He sees it as his business. He takes charge. A lot of governors are in denial. When you go to their states and you tell them that, you know, your state is endemic in human trafficking, they say, no, my state is not endemic. There's nothing like that. They're in denial. And so they are not interested. Hmm. <laughs> Julie Okadonli is a very young girl. <laughs> very young girl. Born 30th December 1966. <laughs> I'm from Bielsa State. I have two lovely children, two adults. My first child is 28, my second is 23. They are working already. No, I'm not. I have two kids working. I'm a lawyer, a chartered secretary and administrator, and a chartered arbitrator as well. Um, I've written a few books, some on human trafficking, and one called Parenting in the 21st Century. And um, when you look at my job, you find out that parenting in the 21st century, that's why I said my job seems to be divine parenting in the 21st century just talks basically of how to protect young children from being abused i cannot separate one from the other i'm passionate about everything because if you look at it at the end of the day it's all service to humanity my ngo is service to humanity Nactip is also service to humanity. So, I mean, if you look at it closely, they are all related.
Okay. You pick a question from this box, you answer the question. We're going to hear your lovely voice once again. <laughs> oh, if you could time travel, when, when would you go? Or where would you go? To? Where would you go? Yeah? Where That's what you mean? Okay, if, it's, if you could time, time travel, travel, when, when will you will go? you go? And where will I go? Do you travel a lot? On my job, yes. Do you care about the situation in the country as it is? I, I just, I just want people. I just want to see. I just try to do as much as I can, you know, to put a smile on one's face, even if it's one person at a time. That's really what I care about, you know. And then, um, yeah, I know. We'll get somewhere. I know, yeah, things may be rough, but we will get there. Um, I believe, you know, I mean, this is not because uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a political appointee. I believe that um, the federal government is doing all it can to ensure that, you know, we get to the promised land. And I believe we'll You're get... You're sure about that? Absolutely. And I believe we'll get to the promised land. Let's just give it some time. With the new ministers coming on board, I believe um, they will complement Mr. President's efforts and um, they will take it from there. I, I believe so. Well, how do you get to really, really reintegrate people into you know, society? Is it by any form of training? Or do you find them jobs? Or what eventually do you get to do after bringing them back from these places? Yeah, you know, we have shelters. Every office has a shelter attached to it. Now we have 10 offices, including HQ and they all have shelters. And so what we do is when we bring back victims of trafficking, we put them in shelters, we give them uh, medical support, psychosocial support, and then we give them any form of training they want. It depends on them, you know, we, we, we interact with them one-on-one, -on -one. we know it's, it's based on what they want. We don't dictate to them what they want. Some want to go back through formal education and we send them to school. Some of them say, no, I just want to learn a skill and leave and that's what we do it's so interesting to know that we've been able to out of four um victims that were sponsored through university by inactive the four of them are working with us today excellent as full staff yes we have some in the universities we have some in the primary school secondary schools that are being trained by inactive we have so many that have been trained in various skills and are now doing their thing we've opened shops restaurants for some of them pair them in groups and then the set of their business. What do you think are the unspoken reasons, you know, by some of these people involved in uh, trafficking or victims of, uh, you know, the trafficked? How do you describe them now? Well, for the traffickers, I just think basically they're just um, very evil people who are extremely greedy and can do anything, you know, to get the money. They don't care about their lives because most of the time they kill you know, to make the money. Um, for the victims, most of them are 80% ignorant. Most of the victims are just ignorant people. Um, that's why I talked about the importance. Is, of are you sure it's just only ignorance or poverty? 80%. I'm, I'm getting there. You know, there are so many factors. Um, it's not just a factor. Now, the main factor is ignorance. I say so because, and if you remember, at the beginning of our discussion, I said it was very important for all the states to have human trafficking task forces because it will be easier for them to identify all the communities in all the local governments and carry out the messages to them. And so what happens is that when you're aggressively carrying out an awareness campaign in one state, they move to the next, to some of these local governments and communities where people have little or no access, you know, to the social media, not to talk about to TV or whatever, you know, so it, it's a problem. They are ignorant. And, you know, this mindset of, you know, anything outside your country, you know, is best, is the best. How does the current spate of uh, kidnappings affect what, you know, your job? Unfortunately, most children that are kidnapped are trafficked. You get kidnapped, they find themselves being forced into prostitution, 
you know, some of them are probably used for organ harvesting. But, but that's even more of an internal problem here, isn't it? It's, it, can, it can be both ways. It can be internal and external. You may kidnap some people and the next thing you find them in Mali. You find them in Libya. You find them in Burkina Faso. They actually kidnap children, men and women, to traffic them as well. This is just a test of endurance, just to see what you can not do without. Hmm. You think of five important things you take along with you hmm. on this castaway journey. I will take water, my toothbrush, because I don't joke with my teeth. Mm. <laughs> I will take my Bible to keep me company, to read it all the time. Um, what else will I take with me? I don't really care about makeup, so I can do without makeup. I think I'd like my face to be fresh for those two weeks without makeup for a change. Um, I'm hearing that for the first time. Yeah. Sometimes you just allow your face to breathe. You know, it's not all the time you make up. You allow your face to breathe. Okay, are you telling that to the ladies now? Not to someone <laughs> like you. No, the ladies know that sometimes you just leave your face to breathe. You don't make up all the time. Yeah. Well, there are, obviously there are some people who would not do without makeup. What do you say to such people? I, think, I mean, look at the... I, I think they should believe in their, their, their beauty without the makeup. Because sometimes people don't even realize that they look better and younger without makeup. I personally think I look better and younger without makeup, even though sometimes I like to make up for the cameras because, you know, the colors and everything puts your face out there, you know. But I think I look younger and better without makeup. And so, 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 yeah. What, does your, daughter, what does your daughter say to you? About? Your looks. Oh, my daughter thinks I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. Wow. <laughs> That, that's her opinion, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> she probably will write an exam and fail. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the last one? Um, I thought about three now. I think maybe I'll take um, a blanket. Yeah. Yeah, just in case to cover myself if I'm cold. And um, oh, what else will I take? Five items? Those are just the four that come to my mind so ready. Right, okay. Yeah. Can I lend you one? Yes, please. A phone. A phone. Very important. <laughs> a phone. Absolutely important. Yes. Yeah. Well, you've just gone past the first two years of your term in office, isn't it? Well, the, the next two, obviously, will be, you know, like uh, looking forward to achieving certain things. What, what are your projections for the next two years? Um, I hope, hopefully, I want to um ensure that we have the human trafficking task forces in all 36 states of Nigeria before the end of the two years. I'm also looking at um, establishing um, uh, human trafficking institute, a kind of academy where we can train um, officers in all the law enforcement agencies, frontline officers, um, not just in Nigeria, even West Africa. Um, it would interest to know that a lot of um, agencies come to NACTIP here and um, to learn from us. Yeah, and we, we, we offer them training as well. So we might as well um, establish an institute where they will come for training and pay us money to be trained, you know, like an academy. Um, I'm also hoping that um, in the next two years, um, we'll have the human trafficking as a subject infused in um, all the um, primary and secondary school curricula. And then um, everyone, our short code will be activated. We're getting a short code where people can easily text or call if they are in distress. And then um, hopefully in the next two years, Everyone should know what human trafficking means. Thank you, Julie, for being on the program. Thank you so much I've for having me. enjoyed the company. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for watching. But by the way, if you have any thoughts, comments, opinion, observations that you may have noticed on this program and you want to let us know, kindly get in touch with us. We'll be glad you did. Thank you for watching. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook.